I love Jason Becker writing. I'm a huge fan of his, of all the stuff he ever, he ever did. But when people are like, man, that's like the apex of guitar right there. I totally don't believe it because there's so much more, right? He's he's like the man at doing these like huge diatonic arpeggios, just like you know, that kind of thing. That's just G major. That's not harmonically complex. It fits in a lot of different places. It sounds awesome, but it's not like a G major seven where it's like kind of like has more emotion in there, you know, that kind of thing, or a minor seven, that kind of thing. Um, which is another tapping thing I'll show you in a second, but, uh, so seven arpeggios are awesome, and tapping them sounds even cooler than tapping regular arpeggios, so you can do something like, and that's, that's kind of the difference between, like, Vi and, like, Jason Becker, and some shrapnel label artist and some just world-renowned dude who has, like, this amazing sound that applies to any kind of style, is they... They approach things musically instead of as patterns, you know, that if they want to hear a 7 arpeggio or a 9 arpeggio, they'll play it and they'll figure out whatever technique it takes to do it. And in this case, you know, it's like the combination of three different techniques to even be able to do a major 7 arpeggio. It's hard on guitar, it's a concern that you don't have on other instruments, but we just have to like break through that barrier to like actually make some music, right? So, um, so combine all that stuff and add like a 7th right here to the E. <laughs> Climb up again. And that's cool. Uh, okay, and here's another trick. Do that across two like pairs of strings. So like if you want to do a, a B flat major seven arpeggio, for example, do that same pattern from up there, way down on the low strings. Now just imagine in your head up here. And again up here, right? So then put it all together. Just try to figure out for yourself a way to combine the, the, the different segments. So like, here's the first one again. Pluck again and then go. And do it again. So you do something like, and that's a, you know, it's an epic run, and that's how you do that. That's how you break something like that apart. It sounds like it's huge and all the way across the neck, but it's like two chunks. Anybody can do that. Uh, the part where it takes practice and you can't just like fall into it is this part, right? Jumping up again. Stopping right there, knowing where the boundary is. And then doing it smoothly so it doesn't sound like you're stopping and then moving to a new spot and then continuing. Again. And of course, it works for other arpeggios too, right? Minor seven. Or uh, dominant, I don't know if I can even do this one. The funny thing about that one is if you mess up, you get these really weird arpeggios. A dominant 7 arpeggio, it's always like one note away from sounding totally kick-ass. So here's, you know, dominant 7. If you uh, raise the one note, the root, you get that diminished arpeggio. You'll probably recognize that from like show tunes and stuff. They do that all the time. They take a dominant arpeggio and then do a diminished right half step up from it. Like that. So you get that sound like So one more thing about tapping. Um, that same kind of hammer on from nowhere concept for doing uh, like minor sevens or major sevens. Michael Romeo from Symphony X, yeah, I keep referring to him because he's awesome. He does he does all kinds of really cool tapping things in a unique way I think that nobody else does. But he'll do something like this. Let's say you want to do E minor 7. Uh, instead of stretching these notes out, or playing them this way. Which is like the way I learned to do it first. Um, he'll do something like... That's 
you do that. It's just string skipping, three note arpeggios, and hammering out from nowhere, right? Three notes, three notes, and three notes, and back down. Except you gotta do it clean, which I'm not. <laughs> And that musical pattern exists anywhere, right? Eric Johnson does it all the time with no tapping at all. And it sounds, you know, he'll do something like... And, uh, except he would do it a lot cleaner, a lot faster, because he's Eric Johnson. Uh, and you should check out his stuff. His stuff is, like, just great. Like, some of those solos that he does are... He'll do, like, pentatonics and arpeggios. He'll mix them up. You won't even know if he's doing an arpeggio or, like, a scalar thing. And it'll be, like, totally smooth. And it's all picked. Um, uh, and it's all like alternate picking too. And I didn't talk about sweet picking, but I'll talk about that some other time. That's a whole topic on its own. Um, yeah, that's, that's, about it. that's all I got for tapping for the moment. Okay. Um.